I've been getting into retro computing on YouTube videos and various web pages. And so uh, I've also been organizing my closet. And unfortunately, this closet had been infested with something. Um, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that there definitely were roaches. And there was definitely a snake of some kind. Um, and something went to the bathroom. <laughs> so there is... Um, uh, it's just it's just grotesque. This, I think, is the result of urine and other waste. I think there might have been a possum or even a raccoon family in this space. This is a storage space. But anyway, um, this is a computer. And at first I was thinking this is a computer from like the late 90s. This might be my first ever PC that I ever bought. If not the first one, then, then probably the second one. The first one I ever bought was a 486DX266, and I can't remember if that was in 1994 or early in 1995. Um, and I think it was $700. Anyway, so the next step will be me opening the case and seeing how bad it looks inside. Okay, I've removed the screws holding the case in. Uh... Here's a close-up of some of the damage. I don't know if this power supply is going to work. Here is some evidence of snake skin that had been shed in there. Let's see what we have here. Um, see a parallel port, 25-pin serial port. That's pretty old. 9-pin serial port. Here's a video card with TV in or out, I can't remember. There's old style network card. Ooh, it has USB. Probably USB 1 or 2. It has SCSI. Uh, SCSI 2 it looks like. There's a, some kind of audio card and of course a modem. Okay, now let's see if we can get this cover off without too much difficulty. Okay, the cover came off no problem. Now I'm going to spin it around and see what kind of damage we see. It looks like the top was protected by that metal covering of the case. This side looks all right. I don't see anything obviously bad here. The front looks like it was spared a lot of the uh, damage. Of course this is just a CD drive. This is predates my first DVD drive I guess. And here's the belly of the beast. Let's see. Um, here's the motherboard. It looks pretty clean in here. Here is the CPU fan. Uh, here is Here are the cards. Those are 16-bit ISA cards. Um, those look like PCI slots. So this seems like this would have to be a uh, Pentium motherboard, or at least a DX4100 maybe. Maybe this is a DX4120. Um, here is the RAM. Okay, um, I don't see anything really bad in this case that would tell me that I couldn't try starting this up. The worst thing is going to be the uh, power supply. Okay, I'm shedding some light on this now. There's the BIOS chip. Um, Real-time clock battery, maybe? Um, anyway, I've disconnected the power from the hard drive. Unfortunately, this power supply doesn't have an option for turning it on um, at the back without having it attached to anything. So, or at least not that I can tell. So. I'm going to power it up. I think this hard drive might be, uh, power supply is probably bad, but we'll see. Luckily, this is a complete clone machine, so I should be able to get some power supply that will work with this. I might have to get some kind of an adapter to the old uh, motherboard connector for the power, but we'll see. Next shot will be me trying to power this up.
Okay, I wanted to go somewhere where I have a grounded, better grounded power supply with a uh, fault reset thing, whatever that's called. Okay, helpful. Great, I had that experience I have too often recording video where I thought I was recording where I wasn't. Anyway, um, here is the CPU fan, which is totally minuscule by today's standards. Uh, PCs, I don't think, got as hot back then. This is some kind of an ATI card, maybe an all-in-wonder. Actually, I see the word RAGE on it, RAGE 128. Um, there's the RAM. Uh, so we only have the power supply fan and the CPU little tiny fan. Let's see what we get when we try to plug this into a monitor and plug in the hard drive. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, I plugged in the smallest monitor that I had access to easily, which is a 19-inch uh, with a VGA, and here we go. Well, <laughs> it worked a minute ago. Oh, I haven't plugged it in. That usually helps. And there it goes. Let's see if we get anything on the screen. I don't see any. Oh wait, there it is. Award BIOS. Intel i430HX. Pentium 200 megahertz. Okay, so this is faster than I thought. And it has 16 megs of RAM. I remember, I think, buying this RAM, and I believe it cost $300 for 16 megabytes. Now you could get like 64 gigabytes for that amount or something. Okay, there's uh, some kind of creative sound card. There is the, uh, I don't know if that's the hard drive or the, uh, it might actually be the hard, yeah, that's the hard drive coming to life. I think it might be a two gig SCSI hard drive. Uh, it's asking if you want to boot to a CD-ROM. No. Starting Windows. This looks like Windows 2000, maybe. Let's see. I have the keyboard. Yeah, Windows 2000. Copyright 1985 through 1999. Built on NT technology, so... I went Windows 3.1, 3.11, 95, 98, 98 second edition, and then 2000. And then I went from 2000, I think, to XP, but I waited a long time because 2000 was rock solid for Windows <laughs> in that day and age. And then XP, uh, when I finally upgraded to it, it was quite mature, and then that was great for a long time. And then I went to Windows 7, and then I went to Windows 10. So, I've skipped some of the generations that have not had the... Ooh! Darn. So, blue screen of death. Uh, and we will stop for today and take a look at this tomorrow.